All right, guys, so we have about uh, half an hour here with the 718 Porsche Boxster. I've heard a lot of mixed opinions on these things, so I wanted to find out firsthand uh, how this car really, really feels. Of course, the big change that Porsche made with the 718 Boxster and Cayman is, of course, the move to the turbocharged flat four cylinder engine, which is a pretty big departure from the old naturally aspirated flat sixes. If you think of the older generation base model boxers, especially the original 986 generation, they were kind of known as being sort of slow, but really well handling daily drivable sports cars. But this one is now legitimately fast with 300 horsepower and close to 300 foot-pounds of torque. That's right, the Boxster now makes 300 horsepower and the Boxster S makes 350 horsepower. Now, since this is a base Boxster, it uh, weighs about 3,000 pounds or just over. It's got the two liter flat four turbocharged engine mounted right behind the driver and it makes a really, really surprising sound for a Porsche. I can't believe I'm sitting here looking at this Porsche Crest and yet it's making that sound. That naturally aspirated flat six whale of the older generations is completely gone. I mean, this thing sounds completely like a Subaru now, but the torque that this motor produces for a two liter is really impressive. I mean, even Subaru, the turbocharged flat four engine specialists haven't been able to make a 300 horsepower from a two liter turbocharged engine in quite some time. The steering, while it is electromechanical, still provides a surprising amount of feedback. The seven speed PDK transmission is honestly faultless at this point. It's pretty much universally renowned as being one of the best, if not the best transmission in the world in terms of responsiveness, the ability to just somehow know what gear you wanna be in without you having to do anything. You don't even have to pull the paddles in this thing. It just knows. While we are on a slightly tighter than uh, ideal section of road here, this car just, oh wow. From turn in to mid corner to corner exit, this thing is a beast. I can't believe that this is now the base Boxster. I know I keep saying that, but this would be an impressive car even if it was a Boxster S. The brakes are typical Porsche, very firm pedal pressure, lots of stopping power. Ah, so much grip. This is a completely new road to me. I don't even know this by heart whatsoever. And yet this car is just such an easy car to push. It telegraphs what it's about to do so well. The throttle response is very impressive for a turbocharged four cylinder. You would think with only two liters of displacement in order to make 300 horsepower, it would need to have a big turbo, it would be very laggy. But honestly, the transmission does a great job of keeping this engine in its power band, like I said before, therefore keeping the revs high enough to where you get pretty good response. All right, let's put it in manual mode here so we can get fine-tuned control over the transmission. <laughs> this thing is quick. Wow, this transmission is so perfect. <laughs> now, I don't know if this sound is making it over on the audio, but this thing makes a lot of cracks and pops in the exhaust. It's pretty entertaining, but again, completely uncharacteristic for a Porsche. And it's funny because after just 10 minutes behind the steering wheel of this thing, I already have such a strong impression about it. I, or at least I have a very strong opinion about it which is to say that this chassis, while it is a somewhat modest and incremental evolution over the previous 981 generation, I mean, you buy a 718 Boxster not because you want better handling or you felt that the handling was lacking in the 981, but because this is the way the future is moving forward. I mean, downsizing, displacement, number of cylinders, using turbocharging, to produce even better performance than the old naturally aspirated engines. And while yes, the sound and the overall drama to that old flat six is 
for all intents and purposes lost in this uh, 718 the amount of usable performance that this engine gives you is on a completely different level now although yes this car makes more power than its predecessor and more torque looking at just the peak numbers don't tell the whole story because this thing makes so much more mid-range torque and i bet if you looked at the dyno curve of this car versus the old base boxster the area under that curve is just going to be so much bigger and it really gives you the flexibility to enjoy the performance of this car at lower rpms you don't have to be screaming all the way at 7,000 rpms to be making good power in this thing you can actually play with the chassis at lower speeds and i think that's a key point that maybe some of the other reviews haven't touched on you know in this car the chassis gives you more options now because of the engine even if you're only at like 3,000 rpms coming out of a corner if you push the throttle you will get the back end to step out and that gives the chassis a really playful character and i think in the Motor Trend review where Carlos Lago drove uh, the Boxster S around a track, something that he noticed is that the car is extremely playful. It gives you a lot of options in terms of oversteer and controlling big slip angles. And honestly, I think that must come down to um, the torque. Think of like a Corvette, a naturally aspirated big V8, lots of low end and mid range torque. How that car performs is that it gives you a lot of straight line performance, but also coming out of corners, you gotta be real careful with the throttle. This car gives you that kind of similar feeling of being able to oversteer at a moment's notice, but at the same time, it's a little bit more uh, forgiving in a sense. <laughs> Yeah, this is a quick, quick car now. So that was just a quick little drive in the Porsche 718 Boxster. Let me know what you guys think. Has Porsche really ruined the overall fun of the Boxster by giving it a turbocharged flat four? Or do you think the extra performance that this engine provides was worth the, the trade-off? As always, thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.